So humanism then considers ethics primary and the basic principle is not salvation of the next life, obedience to God, but the preservation of human life on the planet Earth and the effort to do whatever we can to improve human life, to allow each individual to grow and develop in his or her own terms, to be educated, to be fed, to be cured if, if they have an illness. That is our obligation of doing. And as humanists, we ought to stand up and affirm, I am a member of the human species. I'm a member of the planet Earth. And that obligation I recognize. And I will do whatever I can to further the goals of the world community. Thank you very much. She, uh, she was in charge of the, the health and science reporters. And she said, OK, um, you know, I think you should have a column in the health and science section. I don't want a science column. I, don't, I, I, I want a sex column. <laughs> oh, that just could be a really, really bad idea. Um, but I, I went and, and pondered it. What I finally came to understand is that the people in the movement, or at least the people behind the movement, would actually be happy to see the public schools fail. They think public education is evil. Public education, in its current non-religious form is Satan to them. It is supposed to be treated. And so fighting God, I not only make the statement that firebrand atheism, the so-called new atheism, is better on a micro level and on a macro level, I can support my stuff with numbers. And I'm going to show you a taste of that tonight. First, I'm going to get into exactly what actually firebrand atheism is. So many people have so many ideas about what it is. And a lot of people are wrong. So I want to talk about what firebrand is. So uh, the, the branch point for lobe-finned fish and limbed animals would be called something, OK? I don't know exactly. We, we might call it tetrapodomorph, OK? We can drop down another branch. But, but what we're not doing are creating West. A schism that happened anyway later on. Church Fathers convened the Council of Nicaea in 325. Now this was a hugely important council. Uh, it defined basic church teachings, it solidified the canon of the books that appeared in the official Christian scriptures. And under God slipped into the Pledge of Allegiance. It's just a sort of general you know, use of God by government in a very generic way. Now that has been upheld by the courts. They have said that because it is an historic practice, and it's not specific, it's a generic reference to God, then it doesn't violate the separation. Isn't there some citizen responsibility for saying, hey, I'm an atheist, I'm your constituent, and this is what matters to me, and I'm holding you accountable now that you know I exist. I think it starts with us. We have to make our voices heard. So that Merge, so everything might be actually a single galaxy at some point. So what happens afterward depends upon what this dark energy is. So we don't know what it is. Uh, the simplest explanation of it, but maybe is that's what natural evil is. The logical problem of natural evil suggests that there is a logical contradiction in the suggestion that both the tradition of God and natural evil exist. That there's a logical incompatibility. It's like saying that there's a round square to say that natural evil and God both exist. It, it can't both exist by definition. Indoctrinated with fear that you know, if, if they leave, something bad is going to happen to them. If they disobey the leadership, something bad is going to happen to them. So, so the fear keeps, keeps them in, in line. Um, you know, club members are often told that they'll be possessed by the devil if they ever leave the group. Um, or that they're going to get sick. And then when a former member does get sick, which you know, eventually is going to happen, then that becomes proof. And it's an assumption, too, that, that meat is okay. But I know that you're comfortable questioning assumptions and traditions and things that you do just because you do them. You're not uh, Catholic or Jewish or whatever just because your parents were or your grandparents were. Um, so that's why I'm going to talk to you today. Um, I, I can't walk by these people. It's just a thing to me. 
a creationist caucus who are, who are trying to get creationism. And these are teachers who are pushing, think that, that, that creationism should be taught in science class. And they have their little, all their books. And because it's democracy and democracy is messy, they have a voice. However, and I walk by them and I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm up there and I'm talking. I can't help it. I have to engage with them whenever I see them. And another thing they do is they use emotion and anger. And for a lot of people, like especially like my dad, when he retired, you know, wasn't as involved with stuff, the emotion, the anger that's exciting. My contention is that it, it can even be addictive. That anger can be addictive. My dad couldn't wait to just shut those doors of the kitchen, listen to Rush Limbaugh, belch, drink a beer, and get all pissed off. We need to get our people elected to office. The tea party. Hello? Yeah. Is anybody here who's tea party? Because I don't want to offend anybody. But they're powerful. Yeah. And they're coops. <laughs> they're <laughs> powerful. They put their money and their votes where they want. Look at They took over Congress. Yeah. Um, they don't care what, you know, yeah. On that, Tom Hartman has a good point on that. I feel like I'm not in the right place. Right now. What's that There is an upside. If you find the right kind of attorney. When you died down here, a lot of people ask that. <laughs> so we've held over a hundred ceremonies down here, including weddings. <coughs> Excuse me. How do you keep them from touching the mask? Yeah. <coughs> um, we don't do weddings anymore, unfortunately. Have you written to or called yeah. or emailed? If I ask my senators about it, and your representative, if I ask Bill Nelson, he will agree with me, but I'm not talking to Mark Rubio. I, 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 so you think the best way to get to influence that is to ignore them? Uh, and I think worst of all, really, uh, beyond all those things, is just the general sense of anti-intellectualism, which seems to follow the religious right everywhere it goes. If you look at uh, public affairs in America today, uh, you know, politicians are proudly anti-intellectual. Yes. They, they scoff at elites, you know, as if going to an Ivy League college is something to be embarrassed about. <laughs> Can you be my roadie? In about 15, 10 minutes, I'm going to do a single. Say hi. How are you? Okay, how are you, Laura? There's none in here. Yep. There's some ice in here. I can put them all out just in case. <laughs> say, what do you got to say? Any message for your mom? Oh, mom knows. Actually, the best thing is everybody wants their picture taken with it. So really, it's other people taking pictures, hundreds. Really? Yeah. Okay. Any picture taken with it? Sure. My house is the lights out. AJGP <laughs> has at least uh, four events every month with a great group of people at each venue, and which is pretty impressive. So if you haven't been to our meetings or our book clubs or meet, uh, different venues, please do check it out. There's a lot going on. Um, AJGP is certainly growing, and we're going through some changes. Uh, but we also need your help. Uh, with committees. So, so Greater Philadelphia Coalition of Reason or Philly Corps. Um, so maybe some of you are, you know, found out about this picnic not through HEGP but through one of the other groups. Um, I, all I'm going to say about HEGP, we've got we've got four events usually most months. We have four events. First Saturdays we have movie night. Does anybody, do you know what the movie for August is? Uh, stoicism talks a lot about control. Our decisions and behaviors, according to many of these philosophers are under our control. We respond to and interpret external events they call impressions. 
which can lead us to have faulty beliefs and experience distress when we shouldn't if we have a right mindset about things. We want to ask what control we have and whether we can influence the things that happen around us. Don't hurt the weak. Don't do on to others. If you don't want them to do it, I want to read that room from a dude named Confucius. No fantasy blessing. It's really quite odd to argue about it. Over so much about it. Drink water. Welcome to the region. Yeah, we were cool. He would give them a kick in the butt. And he would give the Kaiser a kick in the butt. He, would, he, would, he was like that. He didn't like authority. And um, anyway, he makes fun of Hitler, but he himself, at the end of the movie, he makes a speech. And that speech, some people think, is one of the greatest speeches. And a lot of people think it was pretty... You know. <laughs> <laughs> that's no. Uh, that's what I was going to talk about. Come to the events. You're all coming to the events. You're all here. You all know about us. You know about your group. Keep supporting it. Keep coming out. Help out. And helping out doesn't just mean money, because that that's important. But helping out means volunteering, getting involved. If you get five minutes a month towards the cause, it's really helpful.